Hi there, Lisa Rana here, and for today's Assemble This video, we're going to be watercoloring on just some regular craft cardstock. I'm so pleased with how vibrant the colors popped against that craft background, and using an amazing set by Unity Stamp Company. This is the Easter Lily Blessings March 2020 Sentiment Kit. Has lots of great sayings for Easter, plus additional ones that you can use all year round. As always, I have all my supplies ready to go. I'm using some Nina Desert Storm 80 pound cardstock for my craft paper. Kiritaki Ganzai Tambai watercolors, just some regular round tip paint brushes that I actually got at Walmart, and then I'm using the Waffle Flower Mini Media Mat to keep my canvas in place as I'm applying watercolor. So I have a white, a yellow, and a green, three basic colors that are very springy, and I'm just going to start out watercoloring those lily flowers. I'm trying to keep my water as minimal as possible. It's interesting how the, the paint will soak into the craft paper. So this first layer I'm doing, I thought it was really vibrant and that it was going to be extra white against that background. So that's why I was tapping a little bit off with my, my paper towel. But as that watercolor paint dried, it really soaked and blended into the craft cardstock. So I let that dry and I moved on to my other flowers, just adding a layer of that white paint, kind of seeing how it reacted on that craft cardstock, just because I've never really done this before. So as I went along, I noticed that that white was really getting muted and it just kind of blended into the craft. So my second round of coloring and painting, I made sure that I barely had any water on my paintbrush, picked up some paint and really kept it thick. It, it, it was just basically wetting the paint so I could pick it up and then painting it directly onto the craft cardstock. I feel like that first layer was important it saturated the cardstock with a little bit of that white to create a base. And then when I went over it with the thicker paint, it sat on top a little bit better. So I feel like both are very important steps to help build up the brightness of the watercolor on the white in particular, just because white will blend in so easily. So I'm letting that layer of white dry again, and I'm going to move on to the leaves. The green popped really vibrantly against the, the craft card stock. I did not have to layer this as much. So I'm just doing the leaves in a nice uh, layer of that green, just kind of covering everything, doing a variance of light and dark. Some places I went over a second time to build up that layer of the green, so it kind of created a little bit of shadow. I'm using the lines in the stamp where there's more lines and more dense lines, that shadow. That means it requires a darker color of green. And that's what creates the dimension in your, in your painting. So as I did that, I did a layer of green. I kind of let it dry. I went over it again in those darker areas that were already built into the stamp, and that created a bit of dimension in the greens. Now I'm just wiping off that little palette area. I have been using it a little bit just to kind of dilute some of the color, make it a little lighter, a little more intense by adding less water. So those that's, those are kind of tips that you have to control the, the depth of color when using watercolor. Now I'm adding a bit of yellow, definitely to the center of those lilies, and then a little bit to the leaves as well. Leaves have lots of different colors that go on, so I just wanted to add another dimension to the leaves by adding in just a hint of yellow, especially to the highlighted areas that were less dense with lines. 
Once those lilies had dried completely, I am going over it just one more time with that white paint. Again, it's just the lightest hint of water so that pigment from the watercolor paints is as vibrant and thick as possible. But it still needs to be able to be painted on to my craft card stock. So it takes a little bit of practice. I feel like I got a great coverage this last round. The white is really popping against the craft cardstock, so the layering of each uh, time of watercoloring was important. Only for the white, just because white is so opaque and it and it blends into the craft cardstock so easily. And then last, I'm just going to add a little bit of highlight to my leaves as well using the white paint. Just kind of focusing again on the areas of the stamp that are less dense with black lines and texture that's already built into the stamp design. So I'm just hinting a little bit of white where there's possibly going to be a highlight going on. Unfortunately, I'm having issues with my video camera and this part did not record, but there I added a bit of blue to the background. I picked out a blue that I liked and I'm just coloring in the background behind those leaves and the and the flowers just as a bit of a contrast. Once everything was dried, I die cut those lilies down into a circle and then I ran another piece of craft cardstock through an embossing folder. This one I believe is hard to find, but if you find any type of a quilted background uh, embossing folder or die cut uh, template, it'll work just as well. I love the texture of this. It's very eastery to me. I don't know, it just has a nice soft quilted texture that I liked for the background of the card. I'm gluing that down with uh, liquid adhesive mainly because there's so much texture going on that I wanted to make sure it had a nice solid adhesion to the card front. Sometimes tape adhesive has a hard time with that so I chose to go with liquid adhesive. Next just adding some foam tape to the back of that die cut circle using two different sizes of foam tape just to make sure I have a nice solid coverage. and then popping that up down in the bottom third of the card and hanging it over a little bit. This is a layout that I come back to over and over again. It's just a great basic layout and so much fun to decorate. I trimmed off the edge of that circle just so it meets the edge of the card. I stamped my sentiments on a strip of craft cardstock I'm notching out the end with my scissors. Again, another favorite of mine is to create banner sentiments. Added a bit of foam adhesive to the back of that and then played around with the placement. Ultimately, I ended up at the bottom of that die cut of the lilies and then trimmed it off to match the edge of the card. Again, I cannot create a card with just a little bit of sparkle and movement. This time I chose some Nuvo drops in ivory seashell. I put two at the bottom and then three at the top. I have to admit I fudged this a little bit. I did not like the placement of that last Nuvo drop. I carefully scraped that off, used a baby wipe to kind of wipe up whatever I could and then I replaced a third drop in a place that made me a little bit more happy. So you can move these around. You have to do it quickly and carefully and just be okay that it may not look perfect in the end. So here is our finished card. I love the vibrancy of that watercolor against the craft cardstock. I love the texture of the embossing folder and the little bit of shine from the Nuvo drops. I did a second card using Prismacolor colored pencils just for a comparison. This is a much more muted effect than the watercolors, but it worked out just beautifully. I, I love the effect of this as well. There's a little bit of shine that kind of happens from the wax of the colored pencils. 
And this is just a little bit of a different layout for the card, so you have a different option to use with the Easter Lily Blessing Sentiment Kit. Plus, the Hello in this kit is perfect for any occasion that you can use throughout the year. Here's a comparison of the Prismacolor pencils on the left and then the watercolor on the right. The watercolor is surprisingly really vibrant and clear and the colored pencils is a little bit more muted and blended. If I had left my stamps in the Misty, I would have re-stamped over my colored pencil just so those defined lines of the stamps would be more prominent against the, the watercolor. So here's the finished card. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing my process. If you have any questions, post below. Thanks again. I'll see you next time.